Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Adams Wright number 4195-00-01-119- We have 00 here, and there's a reason for that. We'll go over it. Dash IB, individually boxed. So we're going to dissect this part number. It's a really big part number for a really simple lock, um, but the point of that structure of the complicated part number is because you're able to build several different variants of this lock and some of them are just simply more involved than this lock and the zeros really tell us you know that it's it's a, a very basic lock so this is a 4195 and that means that this is a, a dummy is what it means, uh, in fact. So there are some documents down below that we're going to go over, and let's get into it right now. First of all, uh, a real quick visual tour. This is literally going to be nothing other than <clears throat> a set of escutcheon trim, is what it is. Interior and exterior escutcheon trims. Okay. Um, you're going to have your outside trim. You're going to have your inside trim. This is what is called a dummy. They're just two plates on the on both sides. Uh, where you're going to see, of course, a dummy trim is going to be simply um, you have a typical application. You have a home um, where you have two active panels that slide back out to a lanai, let's say. You're going to have a lock on one door, um, a, a thumb lock on one door. You'll have a key cylinder maybe on the outside, maybe you don't. But on that other door, you don't want to put a full lock. Um, you don't want to have a cylinder. You don't want to have a thumb turn. You just want a dummy set, and that's where you're going to use this dummy set. So the there are links down below this video, um, and this one is called Product Brochure. That Product Brochure is really handy because it allows us to understand how the part number is put together. And I think approaching this lock would be best uh, served by starting there. Um, before we get to that, let's just talk about uh, what this 4189, 4190, 4195 series of locks are. It is sliding door hardware, exactly that. Uh, outside trim, a lock body, inside trim, uh, sometimes a strike plate, sometimes an interior pole that can be mounted on there as well. The interior pole will literally sit over these two screw holes come off at a, about a 45 degree angle and then screw through the trim into the tapped holes that are here and here okay this casting would certainly permit a cylinder but it's not been finished in the manufacturing process uh, to, to accept a cylinder you can see preparation for a cylinder there that's not been completed so the entire lock itself uh, you can review all of those details if you're looking at a 4189, which would be an active lock without a cylinder on the outside, or a 4190 that would have a cylinder. And really the only important thing that you have to know on these are um, how thick is the door, because that relates to how long are the screws. Um, when you're dealing with a dummy, when you're dealing with an active trim, it affects, you have to know the thickness for the length of the screw, as well as the length of the tailpiece that goes from the inside discussion to the exterior cylinder. So on page two, we can see how we start with building the part number. You have a 4189 without a cylinder, a 4190 with a cylinder on the outside, um, or a 4195, okay, a dummy. The next set of digits here is going to be 00, zero because we do not have a lock body at all. If you had a lock body, you would have a 4189 or a 4190, and that option would be either a radius top or a square top on the lock body. And those faces can be done in stainless steel as well, as you can see. This is just a zero, zero. The next digits that are important are the zero, one. That's the thickness. This client's door is one inch to inch and three eighths. Somewhere in that range um, is what this is gonna work for. Again, related to the length of the screw. Then we have the finish up next, and this is a 119, and that literally means black. Available finishes would be six, uh, a 130 finish to, to match 628, or a 121 finish to match 313, 
This is again just 119 black. After that, we have uh, 00, 00 in our part number because there is for the keying options because there is no cylinder. And then IB just means individually boxed. That's how they sell these. Um, I don't know if bulk packaging is available. If you're building a condo building and you need 80 of these, uh, we might be able to have them, you know, not use 80 individual boxes and bulk pack it and potentially reduce the cost marginally. So you'll see on that page too, you're going to have dimensional properties that are there. And let's verify some of that stuff. It looks like it's eight and um, I would say that this is going to be eight and 25, 30 seconds perhaps, or 23, 30 seconds. So it's a, just heavy on eight and three quarter. Okay, the width is going to be 1.23 inch, so just light on inch and a quarter. You're going to see the preparation that you would need to make in the door uh, on the right side. So they want a prep of eight and eleven sixteenths, uh, quite roughly, eight point six. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, 30 seconds of an inch, but just below 8 and 11 sixteenths. Um, 21, 30 second, if I'm doing the math. So you'll make that preparation, and obviously if you are doing a new installation, you want to make sure that you're matching, you know, whatever else is there, if anything else is there. But you do need to make the preparation in both sides of the door if you don't already have those. The bottom part of page two will show a schematic of what it really looks like when everything comes together as a complete lock, but it will show you that dummy there as well. Now, when you have a pair of biparting doors, you're going to have the active door latch into the edge of the inactive door where your dummy trim will be installed. But it might be nice to have that handle on there because um, when you act, open that active door, well, you might want to open up the inactive door as well and having a handle there may be better for your use or application rather than just tugging along with the recessed pull. So that's the product brochure that's there. There's then also a link to instructions and admittedly these documents really relate to all three of the primary uh, derivatives of this lock uh, type. There's also a parts diagram which is very handy because it will allow you to find just the parts that you need only for this lock series. And what's handy about that is, you know, it's, it, it is indeed most common where clients absolutely do not need, you know, an entire lock. People will call up and say, yeah, the inside discussion cracked because the screws were too tight and sell me a new lock. Okay, yeah, we can do that or we can just sell you the one broken part. So that parts diagram is there to allow you to you know, just really replace what's necessary to replace rather than just patently replace everything. Um, the inside discussion, the lock body, the exterior discussion, the cylinder, the screw packages are all listed there as well. There is then a link to the how to order page. And that how to order page is the same variation, it is a variation on what we talked about initially um, on how to put these locks together. The extended description information down below t does break down the part number into uh, all of its individual components. And then finally, of course, once you understand how the part numbers are built, you can then completely assemble the locks that, that you need. The only item that they don't really refer to, and they don't because this is literally just a dummy trim, would be what you would use for a strike plate if you had an active lock. And a strike for the active lock is uh, not immediately shown. Let me dig that up. The reason primarily is is because the door manufacturer themselves are going to slot out the the preparation on the edge of the door for the hook to hook into. But if you're looking at these types of locks, you're dealing with um, a uh, a 4800 series uh, strike plate from Adams Wright. You can find a reference to the 4800 series. Uh, lock from their full line catalog by just searching it for control F 
for 4800 and you'll find the strikes that will apply there. And it's unusual to sell a strike for these locks, even though we do when we are doing some sort of a um, less than common application for the lock. For instance, we just detailed uh, a custom lock for a custom wooden display cabinet that had rabbited edges for a museum, uh, a museum of Mexican cultural art. And, well, it was made of wood, and they're not going to, you know, you don't have sliding aluminum construction type doors or vinyl clad doors where you can just cut a slot and the hook will hook in. This was wood, so we needed an actual strike plate. So, you know, we, we you know, went with the lock body that you would find in a 4190 and was able to put together a cylinder trim for it. And then, of course, we needed the strike. So you may or may not need the strike. You likely don't, but if you do, that's how you'll find it. Finally, there is a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Adams Wright products that we sell, but a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. Now, it is incredibly common for clients to call us up and say, yeah, I need an HE0066. That's very common for people to say that to us. And then for people to call and say, yeah, I need the 23-066. Uh, now, those parts are usually, those numbers are usually never part numbers. They're actual castings. Um, and do not tell us exactly what you need at all. We know what you're talking about when you say HE0066, but, that does, but we have to translate that into that really long part number so as, so as to be sure to get you all of the parts that you are absolutely in need of for a complete unit. So that's the casting number, and whoever is doing the... Uh, whoever is actually molding this... Uh, or casting this zinc-based material for this manufacturer. That must just be the part number of the mold that they're going to use. So I would imagine Adams Wright calls up their uh, material supplier for these castings and say, okay, I need 30,000 HE0066. They don't need to tell them, I want so many for uh, the 4195 and 4189. They don't care about this at all. It's just the casting. You're going to buy castings, a small amount of after uh, manufacturing is probably necessary, like paint, tapping holes, prepping for cylinders. Anyway, that's off the reservation. Finally, there is uh, a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Adams Wright products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to a full parts uh, uh, document when it comes to all of the items that Adams Wright sells. They have parts diagrams available for much of it, but not everything. And everything that is published is in those documents that are there. Any questions on the 4180, 4195 or any other Adams Wright product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.